Well, it's a pleasure of mine to be out here in Salem, Oregon, and I'm with Dan from Terra Gardens. And, you know, uh, Terra Gardens is going to be on our Garden Palooza the Tour listing, yeah, yeah. which is going to be cool. Looking forward and to it. <laughs> I, I, we are too, and Judy and I will actually be giving a class here. One of the things we'll be talking about in the class is about containers. And you have some beautiful end caps here, and really, when you come to your nursery, a customer can come in, look at an end cap, and pretty much go, that's the container. So let, we picked out a couple here to go over. Let's let's talk about some of the plants that you could actually just put into a pot and have a great right. container for fall. Okay, probably one of my favorites actually is this Mullenbeckia or wire vine. It's a great plant. The thing that I like about it is, is it's tough. So even last year when we had the awful freezing, this plant survived in our containers where a lot of other plants didn't that we thought would survive. And do you mean containers as in the pots that they're growing in too? Actually, no, we had them in, in, in containers that ceramic were, containers and they were nice. just fine. Yeah. And so what else would be in this one that, that people would put in a container? A lot of things, you, you want to look for textures mm -hmm. that com are complementary to sure. each other, that look good together. So we might take something like the black nice. or a yellow or a fern in between. By yep. mixing different textures, it it brings out the color in the plant, not just the plant itself. And I think a lot of people get afraid going into fall and winter because they're not sure if the plants will be evergreen. Now, that one will be, certainly yes. this will be. Right. And this is certainly a, a great textural plant that will be evergreen. What about these other two that are involved here? Well, we're going to find that with the uh with a lobelia, the lobelia is going to die back to the ground when we get into fall weather. It blooms in the fall, but then as soon as we get some frost, it's going to die to the ground, come back great next year. So it's perennial. Yeah, and you'll want to, you'll want to plan to replace it with something else if you want that height and color in the container. Whereas the grass behind it, the panicum, this particular one is, is heavy metal. Mm -hmm. Although it does die back like a perennial, it stays with its structure. It's, it's a tall grass and it's going to have fall color, so it's going to turn some orange and yellow yeah, in the fall. Yeah, it has great fall color. Yeah, it really looks nice in the fall. And then the seed heads remain in place for a long time during the wintertime, so you still have that height and structure. Great, great. Well, now let's run over to another end cap and talk about some of the stuff that's there. Sounds good. Now, Dan, at this end cap, what we, to me, I think a lot of people always think they have to have something flowering in a pot to really make it a container. There's really no substantial flowers here, and yet what a beautiful combination. Yeah, because it's just colors and textures, uh -huh. and, and really there isn't any plant that's blooming all the time in the Northwest. Yeah. If, if you want to pick out beautiful plants that go well together, do that. If they flower, it's a bonus. And you know, I love that in this grouping, there's really only one that's going to completely die down to the ground each year, and one that is maybe a little marginally hardy. Yeah. Let's go over them real quick. So the, the hostas, the hostas are a, a full perennial, we'll call them. They will die down in the wintertime and be gone. Mm -hmm. They'll come back strong in the spring, a little bit bigger. But the hosta will die down in the, in the wintertime. That's this guy. And Dan, this is great architectural structure. What about this cordyline? The cordyline, we wouldn't call it completely hardy here. Yeah. Um, in most years, I'm going to recommend to people that you bring it in in the wintertime. We have the customers that have it live over. My, my own family, we've had them live over several times. That, in yeah, that years always old. happens in gardening. But you can't rely yeah. on it living so I would, what a, I would what plan a, on it being take temporary. a chance though because it really right. is it's stunning beautiful. Yeah. and I love this foliage the Mexican orange especially on Sundance with a little bit of sunshine it really turns yellow you get it in too much shade and it turns green in maybe a lime green and in full shade it's going to turn green yeah but a little bit of sun and it keeps that bright yellow color and of course the always you know beautiful hookahs yeah because the because the foliage is year-round and because it comes in such an array of colors, it's a really nice plant, and it's fairly easy to grow. They really are. Now, you know, the, the great thing, too, about containers is you don't have to just put smaller perennials. You can put trees, shrubs. I mean, really, depending on the size of your container, you can put almost anything in a container. Yeah, basically, as long as there's room for the roots to grow, you can put it in a container. Even some fruit trees, which brings to mind, you have something really fun going on at the end of, of September, don't you? We do. We invite the Home Orchard Society to come out every year, and they do uh, an apple and pear ID. And it's, it's really fun because we have so many homeowners that come that you they lose buy the a tag, house. You buy a house. Yeah, you right. Don't they know buy what a it house. Is. They have no idea what this tree is. It's been there for 50 years, yep. but it produces apples. What are they? What are they good for? And this team comes out every year. They'll be here on the 25th of September all day, and they identify the apples and pears for people so that they know what they are, when they should be ripened, how to care for them, 
The and you're going to have yards. apple and pear trees at that time, too, That's so right, they yeah. can buy them and plant them and be ready for the next year. Yeah. Now, speaking of, of buying and planting, the whole month of September, you've got a pretty cool uh, sale going on. We do, yeah. We always end up with some plants at the end of the season that we say, well, you know what? We'd rather you had these all winter rather than us, yeah. and we put them on sale. <laughs> and um, so the sale runs for the entire month of September, and if it's in a gallon or larger, and it's alive... Basically, it's going to be 20 to 75% off wow. for the entire month. So you could really find some great bargains. Yeah, some really good bargains. Well, you know, I, I, I grew up in Salem, so this is kind of a home, hometown stomping ground for me. But I'll tell you what, if you want to find some great plants, wonderful staff, give you a lot of good ideas and help in making your garden the dream that you want it to be, come on out to Terra Gardens. Thanks so much, Dan. Thank you.